Damage amplification is a stat found on many of the heroes in Deadlock. It's a stat that multiplies your damage, but there are some weird things going on with it. Hmm. If you search Deadlock damage amplification, you will quickly find bug reports about the inconsistencies between different heroes' damage amplification. This knowledge has worked its way into the minds of active players if you ask around in the Deadlock Discord. While damage amplification does affect all types of damage, I will only cover it in relation to weapon damage as it is part of my trio of weapon damage videos. This video should be understandable by itself despite being part of a series. Anyway, this is a dead man's guide to damage amplification. Let's start by listing every source of damage amplification. As long as it's something that a player would perceive as a multiplier to all of their damage, it's on this list, even if it isn't specifically called damage amplification. There are 11 sources of damage amplification, with some notable differences between them. Most damage amplifiers are applied as a debuff against the enemy, while only three of them are applied to the user. Just under half of the damage amplifiers affect the target's outgoing damage, or affect the damage from one hero against another. Only the Magnificent Sinclair has a damage amplifier that affects the target's incoming damage from everyone, which just isn't true at all. Four of the damage amplifiers are able to stack, with two of them stacking without limits. Only a couple of the damage amplifiers reduce the affected player's damage. The most common icon for damage amplifiers is the Red Heart, with some having no icons and McGuinness getting a most fabulous grey square. And lastly, the terminology. Most are described as damage amps to varying degrees, while Shiv's 4 is called a damage bonus, and McGuinness's 3 is described as having both a damage amplifier and a damage bonus. Reading about damage amplifiers is one thing, and using them is another. So let's use all of the damage amplifiers and make some basic observations. After testing, we can see that the damage amplifiers of Infernus, Lady Geist, Paradox, Pocket, and the Magnificent Sinclair all exhibit the weird behaviour of showing two damage instances. All other damage amplifiers only show one damage instance. This simple test doesn't reveal a lot about how damage amplifiers actually work. We can find more differences if we start combining damage amplifiers. The testing method is as follows. We are inflicted with inhibitor. Note the damage. Apply a different damage amplifier. Note the damage again and then find out the relationship between the two numbers. On Lady Geist, our reduced damage is 29, and our increased damage is 33. This is a damage increase of just under 15%. When delving into the maths, where I'll use non-rounded values, we can see that Inhibitor and Lady Geist's damage amplifier are separate multipliers. Oops, I forgot to explain the math screen. The numbers in the middle of the screen are just a visualization. If you want the actual maths, look at the bottom of the screen. However, this approach won't work for Shiv. His reduced damage is 33, and his increased damage is 46. This is a damage increase of 40%, quite the departure from the 25% deadlock tells us. If we do the same multiplication we did for Lady Geist, we can see that multiplying the reduced damage is clearly wrong. The reason for this is because Shiv's Rage and Inhibitor add up together rather than being separate multipliers. This means that there are two separate ways damage amplifiers interact with inhibitor. Additive, like Shiv, or multiplicative, like Lady Geist. After testing each damage amplifier, we find that Infernus, Lady Geist, McGuinness, Moe and Krill, Paradox, Pocket, and the Magnificent Sinclair have multiplicative damage amplifiers, while Bebop, Calico, Shiv, and of course Inhibitor are additive damage amplifiers. We have made two main comparisons between all of the damage amplifiers. The first comparison was the damage instances, and the second was the mathematical comparison. We can make a table from this. 
Here, we can see that two of the damage amplifiers displayed one damage instance and were multiplicative. Four of the damage amplifiers displayed one damage instance and were additive. And the rest of the damage amplifiers displayed two damage instances and were multiplicative. These three groups of damage amplifiers all exhibit quite different behaviour to each other in different circumstances. To make this easier, this group will be called additive amps because they add with each other. I will call this group multiplicative amps because they multiply damage and this group will be called instance amps because they showed two damage instances. Let's quickly talk about instance amps, because they don't act on the damage formula like additive or multiplicative amps. Instead, they run a separate damage calculation, and then apply the damage alongside your original damage. This is why you see two damage instances. In more complex tests, strange things happen. These anomalies will be covered comprehensively in the next video, because it is quite staggering how weird things get. Rather sneakily, additive amps are not as simple as a multiplier to all of your damage. It becomes apparent once you use an ability that provides flat weapon damage. In this example, our Grey Talon deals 22 damage. Buying Glass Cannon, Monster Rounds and Rapid Rounds increases our weapon damage by 100%, resulting in a damage of 45. First time in New York, Talon. When we use Reign of Arrows, Grey Talon's damage is 54. Let's say we were to be affected by Inhibitor, which is a minus 35% additive amp. If we multiplied everything, we would expect our damage to drop to 35. However, our damage is 38. The reason for this is because additive amps multiply damage before flat weapon damage is added. So how do multiplicative amps interact with flat weapon damage? Well, I don't know, because there isn't a way to test both multiplicative amps and flat weapon damage at the same time. However, an educated guess can be made by considering the fundamentals of damage calculations. Games generally calculate damage in two major steps. First, we consider the offensive stats of the attacker and return it as a value. Secondly, we process this value through the defensive stats of the defender. This new value is the amount of damage received by the defender and is generally shown on damage displays. Deadlock is no different in this regard. We can visualize the attacker stats with the bullet they fire and the defender stats with the armor they wear. But what happens when the attacker and the defender are the same person? Thanks to return fire, we can find out exactly what happens. When the bullet of the attacker hits the defender, it is reflected back at the attacker. This means that both the attacker's offensive and defensive stats will affect how much damage they take. The defender's stats have no effect on the amount of damage the attacker takes. If multiplicative amps are an offensive stat, then both the attacker and defender will take increased damage when the M amp is active. If M amps are a defensive stat, then only the target affected by the M amp will take increased damage. With Return Fire active, the Defender takes 35 damage, while the Attacker takes 26 damage. The in-depth calculations into these numbers don't matter as we are only observing if numbers increase or decrease. When the Defender is inflicted with a 15% MAP from McGuinness's Spectral Wall, they take 40 damage, while the Attacker still takes 26 damage. If the Attacker is inflicted with an MAP against them, the Defender will take 35 damage, while the Attacker takes 30 damage. From this, we can say that M-Amps are a type of defensive stat, amplifying the amount of damage a target takes from you. In hindsight, this is obvious because of the ability description and the fact that M-Amps are inflicted as a debuff against enemies. But just because an ability says it will do something a particular way, doesn't mean it will. We can also use Return Fire to indirectly test flat weapon damage and M-Amps together. With Return Fire active, Grey Talon takes 32 damage. While Grey Talon has an M amp inflicted against him, he takes 38 damage. This is because Grey Talon's base bullet damage, weapon damage percent, and flat weapon damage are multiplied by 60% due to return fire, and then McGuinness's M amp multiplies the damage. Although this example isn't perfect, we can see that M amps multiply damage after flat weapon damage. Expressing A amps and M amps in an equation would give us the following. The hero's base bullet damage is multiplied by their weapon damage percent, multiplied by additive amps, and then we add flat weapon damage. We know this works from the Grey Talon example from earlier. After testing with return fire, we saw that M amps multiply all damage a target takes. 
It is also multiplied by a bunch of other stats that I cover in my previous video. Let's go through a simple example with two additive amps and a multiplicative amp. A max level McGuinness has a base bullet damage of 11.11. .11. Buying Glass Cannon, Vampiric Burst, and Warp Stone increases our weapon damage by 165%, increasing our damage to 29. If we are affected by Inhibitor, which is an additive amp of negative 35%, our damage drops to 19. Using McGuinness's Spectral Wall, we gain a 15% multiplicative amp against the enemy, increasing our damage to 22. Remember that additive amps and multiplicative amps multiply together instead of adding. If they had added together, our damage would have been different. But all additive amps do add together. So if Bebop were to sticky bomb us, our total additive amp damage would drop to minus 65%, dropping our total damage to 11. To end off the video, here is the updated weapon damage formula. If you have seen my previous video, you may have noticed that I use the term AMPs instead of damage bonus percent. For future videos, I will continue to use the term AMPs. I wanted this video to be about weapon damage instances, but while testing I found out about M amps and thought it would be best to go into detail about the different damage amplifiers. Thank you for watching, and please stick around for more Mathematical Yap.